All right, hello and um, welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Hitan Bath, who is in Leicester in the UK. How are you doing, Hitan? I'm doing very well, John. Very, very well. Yeah. And Hidden is Hidden is the uh, CEO of Be Great Training, a powerful international speaker, award-winning author, leadership transformational coach. And what we're going to talk about today is well-being, personal development, uh, and really within the context of your great book, which is called The Leadership Adventure: Five Powerful Secrets Every Leadership Every Leader Should Know How to Motivate uh, People and Maximize productivity so um Hiten, first of all give me give me the background to to the book like um, you know the genesis of it why you wrote it and why you think it's important sure sure no thank thank you very much john i, I mean i think i think that um certainly growing up right i i had i had great teachers i had um and there were not always teachers in formal education there were not teachers always in in school, although I did have some great teachers in school, but I had teachers, for example, um, I was bullied at, as, as a kid. And um, uh, my dad actually got me into martial arts as a way of actually building my self-esteem and my confidence. That's how, that's how my martial arts journey started. And, you know, my martial arts teacher would say certain, so not only teach me punching and kicking and all the usual stuff, mm -hmm. but actually say certain things that were, that were very wise and, and, and actually you could apply to life, right? And, and, and as I went forward and, you know, I came across many different teachers in different fields. Um, and, and, and what I found was that no one really teaches kids and nobody really teaches adults even, I don't think, how to handle life. You know, we, we, we very much are people that are kind of like, you know, we, um, we love to have uh, you know, our formal education, our qualifications, our technical skills, and that's it, you know, that's it. But who teaches you how to deal with setback? Who teaches you how to deal with failure who, or, or heartbreak or some of the inevitable things that, that all of us are going to face in life? And, you know, that, that really, really um, uh, sort of started a passion and a journey for me into self-discovery, self-development, philosophy, um, and that really, you, you know, I'm, I'm a lifelong learner, John, you know, and um, I, I, and that really started my passion um, and, uh, and kind of formulated my thoughts into a book. Always wanted to write a book um, and, and, and I've got finally got one out. Yeah, no, that, that's that's great context. Thank you so much for that. And there's so many things there that I just wanted to touch on. And uh, yeah, as we discussed before we came on air as a martial artist myself, I do. I agree with you. One of the things that I did was. When my son was three and a half, I I put him in. I started him in martial arts, and part of the reason part of the reason was that it's one of the last places where you can learn, you know, discipline and respect and yeah. earning. And earning is the most important thing because, um, you know, we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of making it too easy for everybody nowadays, but whatever. But that idea of 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 hard work, earning gaining yes. respect and self self and a personal accountability is so critical no you're absolutely right absolutely right actually john you know one of my one of my favorite kind of um quotes it's from the uh u.s navy seals and and the u.s navy seals you know they have a they have a symbol of their um uh you, you know their, their badge of honor is is the trident and and one of their saying is you must earn your trident every day you must earn your trident every day. And that, and, that, and that actually means that you have to do something difficult, something that challenges you, something that takes you out of your comfort zone. Because essentially, the most important relationship we have in life, okay, uh, I'm get, getting straight into the philosophy now, but, but, but the most important relationship that we have is the relationship that we have with ourselves. Mm -hmm. How we speak to ourselves, our self-talk, the, the relationship we have with us. And there's too many people out there that don't have a high sense of self-worth. They don't have a high sense of self-esteem um, and they don't look after themselves enough. So then how can you expect to look after somebody else? And one of the ways, one of the ways in which you can actually 
start to build that relationship with yourself and to be somebody when you look in the mirror somebody that you like and respect is by earning your trident by doing things that take you out of your comfort zone they're not the easy things but you know you're like oh you know i did that today i i actually went for my my jog and i ate my broccoli and i stuck to what i said i was going to do so what happens is you you you, you build trust with yourself and then your self esteem and your confidence grows and, and and when we break the promises to ourselves you know what happens is we erode our confidence yeah, um, yeah i so. think that's a, i think that's a i think that's a fantastic point and uh, and i think you know in some ways we live in a we live in a strange culture today i always call it the you know the shortcut culture where everything is is supposed to be easy and you know you don't yeah. really do any make any effort or whatever but to your point i think because of that it's people are underachieving and and feeling worse about themselves because they have this unrealistic expectation that everything should be easy and then when it's not because it's clearly not then as you said self confidence is eroded and you end up in a worse off position absolutely no absolutely I, i mean i mean john if i asked you the question right if i asked you a question if i said to you chocolate cake or apple what would you go for chocolate cake or apple <laughs> Um well that's a difficult one I probably I'd probably say apple because that's what I think I should say but I probably want chocolate cake <laughs> absolutely, absolutely so so look the chocolate cake for all of us right is the is the immediate thing that appeals to you and you think oh the chocolate cake oh that sounds you know that's something that I want that's something that's tasty but if you eat chocolate cake for a whole year it perhaps wouldn't serve you very well now apple might not taste as good as a chocolate cake in the in the in the beginning but over the long term it's better for your health and like that there are so many choices that we have in life um that are either chocolate cake choices or they're more sort of apple choices so what i mean by that is this society has been geared i think and we're marketed in a world where everything is instant gratification now 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 it's chocolate cake so it's like Oh don't worry about don't worry about your debt we'll give you the money now here's some here's some credit cards and you know go ahead and enjoy yourself now no problem here you go so a lot of things are like chocolate cake you know you know you want to go out and you want to have fun and you want to have uh you, you know relationships and but you're not thinking of marriage you know so it's not it's not long term so i think us as a society are we are we are sort of perpetually making chocolate cake instant gratification choices um and what we need to move towards actually is the longer term things because there's a difference between pleasure which then it eventually ultimately then just leads to pain as well you know the duality of pleasure and pain mm-hmm. uh, and there's something called long term satisfaction and happiness which is a wonderful place that all of us actually want at the end of the day i i i believe and that is through making those longer term choices yeah no i think i i i think you're i think you're so right on that maybe i'll change my uh, my thing now instead of the shortcut culture i'll just call it the chocolate cake world that we live in <laughs> cuz i love it cuz cuz you you are correct i mean it's all everything is is short term and instantaneous and all of that but as we know our our journey to more evolved people is a journey and it takes uh, it takes a long yeah. time and it takes experiences and kind of going back to what you said at the beginning is is we we expect everything to be nice and orderly as you say you go to school get your degree go to work find your job description do your job, and and nothing prepares us for all the all the variables that come into play and all the unexpected things and even as much as you know even navigating relationships with other people within a work yeah. context nobody prepares you for that no absolutely absolutely and i think it's um it, you know we expect we expect things to be uh you know that you know there's a, there's a sort of entitled culture i think that's that's that that's sort of forming um you know i think uh, you know i'm a I, i'm a parent and you know i'm very conscious of um my kids not feeling that you know they 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 they're entitled to things right but i think even as adults you know there's an entitlement that we should we should have this and we should have that and and when things happen which they eventually will you know they inevitably change you know change is inevitable right 
somebody's somebody's going to get a disease somebody's going to die somebody's this thing's going to happen something that you didn't expect is going to come out what can you do how will you handle that and 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 what i feel is what i feel is is that a thorough training in philosophy a, a thorough training in the way of looking at things and and specifically you, you know for example i'm a i'm a great fan of the stoic the stoic philosophy right you know stoicism an amazing philosophy that in its essence can be boiled down to having a logical approach between the things that you control in your life and the things that you don't control knowing the distinction between that very very clearly there's a classic serenity prayer i think it's from the bible that 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 goes god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change courage to change the things i can and wisdom to know the difference you know so there's three there's a there, there, there's three aspects to that what do you control what do you not control and being very clear in your mind about where you stand yeah and and i think that's and i think that's such a powerful concept and i'm a big believer in stoicism as well i get accused of being a stoic often <laughs> and unfortunately some people you know for some reason stoicism or being stoic has become sort of has a negative connotation which i don't understand but that's uh, that's probably because i'm a stoic um but the other part that you were just saying there, what what that that quote from the Bible, they uh, you know they use that I think in 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 uh, AA and Alcoholics Anonymous and yes. things like that. Yeah, um, I certainly I have a friend who's been in recovery for a long time now, and that is one of the most important things to understand at the beginning is what you can control and what you can't control. And to yeah. your point, I think that's um, people come into work every day trying to control things they can't control and mm. not focusing on the things they can and as you to your point not knowing the difference between the two absolutely absolutely and, and and you know now we see you know from the i mean before before the pandemic you know the the whole area of uh mental well-being mental well-being in the workplace it was a very very important uh important theme now that has grown so much more momentum and so much more emphasis which is only a good thing because still unfortunately john there is a lot of stigma and misunderstanding around mental health, right? Oh, yeah. But 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 once we once we start to once we start to have these conversations, once we start to talk about these things, you're gonna have less burnout. You're gonna have more employee engagement. You're gonna have people that are going to enjoy um, their work and bring their A game to 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 business to 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 their working life. You know, it's such a it's such an important thing, and 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 what is good now is I am observing um, some of the changes um, in the way you know from from the pandemic um, in the way in which we conduct business, in the way in which the workplace is changing, people's expectations are changing. Um, it's a very very interesting time. Yeah, and, and I totally agree with you. I think. Uh... I think it started pre-pandemic, but it certainly accelerated uh, during the pandemic. Is that I think that people are craving more authenticity and and you know and connection and and they want to trust to get you know they want to trust. I mean, there's so much mistrust out there, but they want to trust people that they're dealing with. And and to your point about about mental health, I mean, it's it's so crazy, isn't it? If you think about it. Uh, that that it became a big fad over the over the last I don't know couple of decades. It's like you know oh we'll give you a gym membership or we'll have a we'll put a gym in in our play, in our in our um, in our office and we'll put foosball yeah. tables and all of this and and all, so we'll do everything about around physical you know um, uh, physical health but we won't focus on mental health and we keep leaving that aside and if you think that the people you work with and work for or whatever haven't gone through intense mental challenges over the last couple of years, then, mm. you know, you have, you have been awake. And I think this is the time we yes. do have to, we do have to address this and we have to treat mental health the same as we would treat physical health. 100%, 100%, John, you know, and, 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 you know, when it comes down to mental health, sometimes, you know, what can an employ a, employer uh, or a business leader do to support, for example, employees' mental health, right? And, and 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 no one's asking, no one's asking people to become mental health experts. Okay, you know, sort of become trained in, you, you know, and, and and become a become a therapist or a counselor. But there's simple things 
right? The simple things, for example, listening, listening to people, right? You know, taking out time to actually listen without, without judgment, active, you know, and, and when it's amazing because when people feel listened to, that in itself is a form of, is, 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 is a form of therapy, you know, just the whole area, I think, I think the type of leaders we need now are leaders that have high levels of emotional intelligence, um, that have that have great empathy and great understanding and you know I think people can let down their guard a lot more you know we've all been through this it's okay to be vulnerable it's part of that authenticity nobody you know we live in a we live in a strange world of and I think this puts a lot of pressure of us pressure on to us especially from a mental health perspective of projecting the perfect image of ourselves okay and I think, uh, you know, living up to, you know, keeping up with the Joneses or, or, or keeping up with the Patels, as we'll say in, uh, <laughs> um, uh, you know, uh, as an Indian, um, you know, it's, it's very, it's very difficult because, because, you know, we're always, and, and especially, and I think especially social media, young people, especially, for example, Instagram, you know, if you're not a, if you're not a multimillionaire by the age of 24, you know, or you don't have a Lamborghini and you don't have the six pack abs and, you know, it's ridiculous. There's a ridiculous yeah. amount of pressure that we're putting on ourselves, on our, on, on our mindset. And that all leads to uh, problems with mental health. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. And I think the social media, unfortunately, you know, it has its, uh, it has its benefits, but there's a, certainly a huge amount of insidious side effects of it. And I think, what you just said there the comparison piece is is awful because yeah okay you can go on and you can find the jake paul or somebody like that and great but what you don't see is the millions of other people who tried to be a jake paul and failed miserably and probably messed up i know this this there's there's somebody in this neighborhood i won't mention names but who <laughs> dumped call it dumped college in order to try and be an influencer on youtube like i mean and it's not going that well but uh but that's what I'm saying. This crazy world we live in, we just look at all these like overnight successes and think I can be an overnight success. We don't realize that number one, there probably weren't an overnight success. And number two, there's thousands and thousands of other people who failed at this. Yes, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think the most, the most important thing is not to feel again, the relationship with yourself. You know, when you're looking externally at other people, you know, you're becoming this, you know, I, I'm inadequate. I'm not enough because I don't have what that, I don't look like that person. I don't have enough money that this person has. So this whole thing makes you feel, but what you don't do is you don't look at actually what you do have. You don't look at the countless innumerable blessings that you and me, John, living in the countries that we live in yeah. with food in our fridge, the education that we've had, we don't realize we are top of the food chain. And, you know, there's a, there's a favorite rhyme, one of my favorite rhymes, and I, I remind myself of it, right? You know, if, you've, if you're breathing and you've got breath in your lungs, you're blessed, right? Yeah. And my favorite rhyme, it goes like this. Um, I had the blues because I had no shoes. When upon the street, I happened to meet a man with no feet, right? That's perspective, yeah. right? Yeah. You, we've got so much going for us. We've got so many blessings and we're being trained by our devices and by social media. It does have its benefits, I admit, to, to sort of um, compare and say we're not enough. You know, yeah. you see, I think, I think in a way, um, want and sort of instability drives the system in many ways, doesn't it? Because you know, it's the, it's the phone and now it's a new phone, it's the car and now it's a new car. It's always, it's always that race. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're so right. And, and uh, it's unfortunate. My, my, um, my father used to say that if you have enough, you have more than enough. Oh, I and, love that. I yeah. Love that. And, uh, and I think that is, and, and we're all guilty of it. I know I'm certainly am, but we're all guilty of, of, of living in a certain, with a certain sense of dissatisfaction. Like, you know, we're dissatisfied. As you said, we don't have enough. There's this, there's that. And we don't take a step back. Uh, yeah. and count the blessings that we truly have and we have many of them and even I think the other thing too as well Hiten is that we don't often look back at how far we've come it's always like we're far away from you know we're so far away from this big goal we have but we never look back 
and how far we've come and what we've overcome. And, and when you're feeling like, you know, discontented or frustrated or maybe you feel like giving up, sometimes it's good to say, look, look at all the things I have achieved and look where I've gotten to, as opposed to always being like, oh, that, you know, that distant, absolutely. distant fields absolutely. are green. Absolutely. absolutely. And I think, I think, John, there's two things. One is, one is growth, ambition. What's my potential? What could I do? Um, and what could I achieve? And that's exciting. You know, I have a quote, I refer to it in my book. I, you know, I, I, I say, if living things grow and you're not growing, what are you? If living things yeah. grow and you're not growing, what are you? Dead, right? So we have a natural, natural thing as human beings to get to the next level, to achieve. That's fantastic. Now, can, now, now what I'm trying to teach people and, and, and trying to coach is you can be extremely ambitious, extremely forward driven, you know, absolutely to achieve your goal. But from a place of fullness, you're already blessed. You're already full. You're not empty. What most people do is they they pursue their goals with a sense of emptiness because what they do is they they say, oh, I'm empty now. So when I become a millionaire, I'll be full. So then so then when they become a millionaire, they realize that, oh, why am I not? Why am I not happy? Because, you know, you should have been happy from day one. And one of the biggest failures, I think it's Tony Robbins who says, one of the biggest failures is achieving success, achieving success and realizing you're not happy. You know, it's yeah. a strange one. It, it is a strange one because I think we don't, uh, we tend to focus on the destination and we don't enjoy the journey and we don't realize that the, and every, and every, every destination you know, there are stages in getting there and we don't celebrate the stages or even look around and and i think if there's one thing i i hope that the pandemic did was it forced people to kind of lift their heads up and a little bit and look around and see what's around them and to your point like if you're always going to head down or focus forward you're kind of blinkered and you don't realize the the things that are there today that you know could have you in a completely different frame of mind absolutely absolutely i mean right now for example I have I have uh, two daughters. I have a um, uh, I have a now four year old and a, a a nine year old, right? No, eight year old. Sorry, eight year old. Um, and and these two girls, just just observing them, just seeing how 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 funny they are, how they're learning, the things they say. I'm you know I'm getting in my hugs and my kisses, and I know I know I'm not always going to have this. I know there's going to be a time where, you know, and I sometimes just take myself, I take myself out, you know, when I'm holding my daughter's hand and just simple things, walking to the shops or going to the park, I actually consciously take myself out of my thoughts and my things to do list that we, you know, that we constantly have chattering away. And I say to myself, this right now is the happiest time of my life right now. It's magical. It's absolutely magical. And if you're not, if you are not conscious of the moment, the simple things, right? The simple things. If you're not conscious in those moments, right? You know, even, even just looking out the window and seeing a tree, yeah. right? There'll be a time where you don't see a tree anymore. You'll never see a tree, right? Yeah. So, you know, there'll be a time where you don't experience wind or rain. So life is very, very precious. And something that, you know, mindfulness and being present and meditation uh, uh, does as well. It allows you to appreciate the magical moment that we're in. Yeah. Every moment is magical, in a yeah, way. No, I, 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 I love that. Uh, I, you know, I often say that, uh, you know, if it all ended tomorrow, like the world ended tomorrow, or if I, if I exited this mortal coil tomorrow, um, I would still have had, I, you know, I still would have had a life beyond what I what I imagined you know back when I was a kid and I think sometimes we forget to look and sort of say as I said look at where we are and as you said like the magic moments I mean with your daughters I mean that's so fleeting you know my son is 17 now and the other day we were we were driving in two cars uh, down to somewhere to do something and I was looking in the rear view mirror and I see my son sitting in a car yes. behind me and I'm just like how did this happen how <laughs> Oh, you get so <laughs> yeah yeah and so i agree I, I, you know just uh, every 
you know, taking time out to focus on the present and mindfulness. I think it was in one of James Joyce's books that, that he talked about living at an arm's length from yourself. And I think that's what people tend to do. Wow. Yeah, you're living, a, you're living, you're living beyond, you're living at an arm's length away instead of being in the moment or being present. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, this has been great, Dan. I mean, I've, clearly we could go on for quite a while here. The The book is called uh, The Leadership Adventure, Five Powerful Secrets Every Leader Should Know to Motivate People and Maximize Productivity. All of Hiten's information will be below this video. But before we go, Hiten, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and hold up your book again so people can see it. Yeah, so this is The, uh, the, the Leadership Adventure, The Five Powerful Secrets Every Leader Should Know. Uh, the, you know, one of the main ideas behind this book is that we're all leaders. You know, if you are a, if you are a parent, you're a leader. Uh, as a friend, you're going to be a leader. The best leaders are also followers, always learning and always listening as well. Um, and, and, and also in, in, in a business context, you don't have to be the CEO or the, or, or the entrepreneur, but you can be an intrapreneur these days. You can own your particular and bring your A, a game to to, to the workplace. And, and, and the very simple idea behind, behind the book is, is a lot of personal development, a lot of philosophy around it, is I always say, me, the team, the business, the world. Me, the team, the business, the world. This is the way it works and I go in that order. So me, starting with you, bringing your A game to, 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 to work, being the best that you can possibly be, that energy impacts your team, whoever your team happens to be, whether professionally or personally. Um, that then impacts the business and the business goes on to conquer the world, right? So, but it starts with you and the leadership adventure is that personal development journey within to be the, to, to actually sort out our negative self-talk, to build our self-esteem and our confidence, um, to, to, to love ourselves a lot more and be much more kinder and more present in our life. Um, and, then, and, and, and then do wonderful things um, in the world. Yeah, listen, fantastic. And I, I really would uh, encourage you to go check out uh, Hiten's work and uh, Leadership Adventure. I love that, the Leadership Adventure, the name you're coming, because it is, because leadership is an adventure. Sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it's a great adventure and sometimes it's a very interesting one, but it's always, uh, it's always a good journey. But So I love that. So I would encourage you to check it out. Again, thank you for, for joining me today. Thank you all for listening and watching. And I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.